Dear colleagues, dear friends, welcome to this event, the hearing organized by the ALDE Group on Freedom of Press, Freedom of Media in Bulgaria. This is certainly not the first event that takes place in this house. I remember when we discussed freedom of press in Italy, and then we discussed on Hungary, and we discussed about Romania, and yesterday it was something about Poland. Today is Bulgaria. This morning I was a speaker in a meeting regarding freedom of media and the relation between uh, the European the Union, media. Russia, and the countries in the Eastern Partnership. Because the topic is of utmost importance, and I dare to say that for liberals it's definitely crucial. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome our group leader, Mr. Giefer Hofstadt, and I will ask him to take the floor and introduce us in the subject. Well, introducing the subject is... Uh, but I remember me very well um, that um, one of the uh, owners of uh, a number of newspapers in Bulgaria came to me, Stanislas, it was six months ago, something like that, I think, to talk about uh, what was what's happening in his country. And uh, it is at that moment that we decided uh, to uh, uh, organize uh, this uh, hearing on uh, media freedom in uh, Bulgaria. And it's, uh, for my group, uh, a very important uh, issue uh, because we, we, uh, our group doesn't uh, avoid open discussion on, on difficult uh, topics and matters. So it's not the first time that the ALDE group is talking about media freedom. We did it on issues in France. We did it on Italy. We did it on hung Hungary. Uh, we did it on Romania uh, a few months uh, ago. And why? Because uh, we are truly worried that there is uh, a growth in uh, what I call a particular political trend in Europe. And especially in a, in a number of uh, regions uh, in Europe. And this trend is the rise of populism, nationalism, and at the same time, as a consequence of that, deterioration of media freedom and lack also of political pluralism. A uh, deficit in respect to fundamental rights and freedom uh, is, in our opinion, as so serious, if not more serious, than breaching the stability and the growth pact. Everybody is talking today because of the Euro crisis about the stability and the growth pack and the rules and the discipline and so on. And it is very important to have a sustainable economic growth in Europe. But I think that respect of fundamental rights and freedoms uh, inside the European Union is as such uh, important. Um, turning our back on the basis of why this union was created undermines both uh, the uh, raison d'etre and the prospects for the futures, and it undermines also uh, the European Union uh, in his relationship uh, with external uh, partners. Because uh, we cannot have double standards. We have to address these kind of problems inside the European Union as rigorously as we do that outside the European Union. Now, we are always very keen when it concerns Belarus, uh, Saudi Arabia, or Myanmar. Uh, that's a, a, a reason more not to be silent on what's happening inside. You can only uh, give lessons between brackets, I should say, outside the Union to other people outside the Union if you have uh, uh, the good standards uh, and good practices inside uh, the Union. So, uh, I'm very pleased that uh, my uh, uh, colleague uh, Renate Weber uh, in the Civil Liberties Committee together with Marietje Schake in the Foreign Affairs Committee uh, will drafting reports uh, on the freedom of the media inside and outside uh, the European Union uh, borders. And today, uh, as you know, we speak about media freedom in Bulgaria. Um, a country that I personally admire and, and greatly uh, respect. Uh, but if the European Union, I have to tell you that, were a classroom, it could be that Bulgaria is an underperforming student. And why I'm saying that? Uh, because, let's talk facts. The 2011 
economist democracy index says that in 2011 Bulgarian democracy was the 52nd out of 167 what was one of the worst results of the EU member states and more important the transparency international in its corruption perception index have uh, surveyed 182 countries and found Bulgaria only 86th. It was the worst result of all the countries of the European Union. And the result was even worse than China, who was 75, or Colombia, uh, who was on this list on the 80th place. Reporters Without Borders in its, uh, as you know, Freedom of the Media Index ranks Bulgaria on the 78th place. And same organization states quite clearly that in their view, there is a persistent uh, problem uh, with the media freedom in Bulgaria. And that problem is not addressed because there is a lack of political will. And I'm quoting uh, what I found uh, in uh, reports without borders uh, commenting their freedom of the media index. So I believe that in this light, um, the hearing that we are organizing is uh, timely and relevant. And I'm really looking forward to a fruitful discussion and also uh, to see together at the end of uh, the hearing how uh, we could uh, uh, organize a, a possible follow-up uh, in the near future. So, thank you very much for your, your presence, and I give uh, the chairmanship uh, to uh, Renato Weber, who shall chair uh, uh, our uh, hearing of, uh, uh, of this afternoon. Renato. Thank you very much, President Verhofstadt. Uh, let me start with a, a couple of uh, administrative announcements. This hearing is treating well. French, uh, English, and Bulgarian, English Channel 2, French Channel 3, Bulgarian 21. So please feel free to use the language that suits you best. Uh, we will have a very busy afternoon with um, several topics on the agenda and with uh, many speakers, and I'm sure that also from the audience, many people would like to interfere to raise questions or make very brief comments. I will have to be tough on the timing, and I apologize in advance for this, but otherwise we will not succeed to, to go through all the, the topics that we have. Uh, I will, we will start with the first topic, which is, in fact, what are the issues at stake uh, when, it is, when we discuss about freedom of press in Bulgaria? how these th things are, are seen from, let's say, outside, from an outside perspective. And we have with us two very distinguished guests, Mr. Olivier Bazid, General Director of Reporters Without Borders, and Mrs. Francine Cunningham, which is, who is the Executive Director of the European Newspaper Publisher Association. So, Mr. Bazid, the floor is yours. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Thank you very much. Madam Chairman, first of all, I would like to sincerely thank the LD group. Reporters Without Borders has often been complaining to the European Parliament for not raising the subject of uh, freedom of expression, and we feel that that still is the case. So we very much welcome this kind of initiative of media freedom in Bulgaria. Now, if some people don't want this kind of debate to be held, we all the more appreciate uh, the fact that we're holding this event. When it comes to press freedom in Bulgaria, we're very worried about this, in particular since 2008. We went there with a mission report. It's fairly rare when we send our teams on the spot. It's because we're very worried about the country. We've been back on three occasions, and uh, all we're seeing is a deterioration in the situation. Now, I'll try to be brief because the aim is to have a dialogue with you on the subject. I think there are four main reasons for this deterioration. First of all, economic reasons, legal, political, 
reasons and then reasons to do with the profession itself. In economic terms, the media market is distorted in Bulgaria. It's not liberal. It hasn't been liberalized. It's organized and in the hands of certain people who, following the fall of the regime, took up control of all the key economic activities in the country, including the media. And in general, we could say that the media is in the hands of the so-called grey economy. Now, it's not necessarily uh, mafia-type organizations, although sometimes it is. And the aim of taking up the media into their hands is to give them communication tools and allow them to exert pressure and conduct campaigns to be granted certain contracts with very high economic stakes. In fact, the EU has had to intervene on some occasions here. The media sector is also one for money laundering. This is a system that is often used in a very wide scale. The advertising regime is very clearly distorted uh, because of the institutional advertising that we see there. Now, we're not familiar with this in our countries, France or other countries, because the institutional participation has fallen. However, in the Balkans and in Bulgaria in particular, the system is open to manipulation. Today, if you look at the number of titles and media that exist in Bulgaria on the market, and particularly in the midst of the economic crisis and a crisis within the media, it's very clear that there is a huge problem today in Bulgaria. And then there's a problem with the system of the public bank that was set up, and I'll spare you the details. Today, there's a bank where all the public institutions have an account, and it's within that bank that some people get financing to buy media. And the principle might seem to be an interesting one because there's the intervention of the state for and in favor of press freedom. That's what some people say. Nevertheless, the system in Bulgaria is very worrying and obviously has repercussions on the independence of any editorial lines in any papers. And these papers end up in the hands of just a few people. And today, it's quite easy to identify who owns the media in Bulgaria. Nevertheless, when it comes to the underlying capital, that's much more opaque. And then the social status or the status of journalists, we're very worried about that because in almost all cases, journalists work without a proper employment contract. That means that they uh, can be exploited, but it also means that they can be open to censorship. Obviously, it's not just about economics. It's far more complex than that. As well as that there are legal issues. Bulgaria has embarked about on certain reforms, for example, decriminalization. But at the same time, it's following a negative trend regarding press freedom and has organized its legal setup in such a way that might seem at first sight to be liberal. Nevertheless, it isn't really, because now defamation is subject to huge fines, and it means that there's a great deal of pressure on independent journalists. And I mean independent in terms of status. So there's huge pressure exerted on journalists and a lot are not conducting investigations for fear of being fined. Now, access to public data, despite the public authorities' undertakings, it's almost impossible to get access to this data. Now, I forgot to tell you at the beginning of my presentation that uh, there are two main aspects in freedom of press. There's what happens in Sofia, the capital, and then in the regions. Now, if we might challenge the freedom of press in Sofia, in the remaining regions, it's almost impossible. So coming back to the legal situation, there's a lot to say. There are some extraordinary people, such as the NGO Access to Information. They've been working for 10 years now, and they're doing an excellent job in the field. I also talked about political aspects, and I'm aware that I've only got 10 minutes speaking time. Today, the 
political classes in Bulgaria are still very much drawn from the old system. Obviously, they're very much in favour of the EU. There's no problem with that. Nevertheless, the political classes concept of the press and the role of the press has remained enshrined in the old tradition, uh, namely it's uh, for purposes of information, not for investigation. And today there's a problem within Bulgaria and within the political classes. Now they're not always completely corrupt, nevertheless there are certain practices with respect to the press where they see the press as uh, for the purposes of transmission. And there are huge links between people with economic power and people who are in the press. As a result, there are serious implications for independence of the press. They're in the hands of the economic uh, key players. And then when we look at the issue of media freedom in Bulgaria, we have to look at the issue of the journalists themselves. Often we're told that there's no problem within the press. However, it's very clear for us that even though, of course, there are very excellent professionals in Bulgaria, these journalists don't have structures to work together. So there are exemplary, extraordinary people working there who fight very hard. However, we feel that the majority of journalists tend to confuse freedom of expression with freedom of information. However, these are two completely different elements. And as I said, first of all, this is because of the social and economic condition of journalists, also because of the lack of training for journalists. It's also partly to do with what happened 20 years ago with the fall of the regime and the former Soviet bloc. Obviously, not everything can happen overnight. However, within the profession and within the professional associations which are trying to establish themselves, there are huge shortcomings. And then another reason for the problem with media freedom in Bulgaria is in the hands of the press itself. And we've made huge efforts to tell the Bulgarians that the problem is, exists throughout Europe. Bulgaria is a crucial country for energy, Nabucco, South Stream, North Stream. It's a country at the, it's a cornerstone country involved in pharmacology. It's our gateway to Central Asia, Turkey, Russia. It's a country that deserves a great deal of attention from the press quite apart from the political situation. It's very difficult to convince journalists to go and investigate in Bulgaria. We have a facade, but behind that there's the reality of all the journalists who can only get their investigations uh, published through the net. Today, in Reporters at Borders, we feel that there's almost uh, no media freedom in Bulgaria, only on the internet. That's all, uh, that's the only place where there is freedom and obviously for an EU country that is a huge problem. Now, I've stuck to time uh, and I'll now hand over to my colleague but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Merci beaucoup pour votre intervention, même si vous... Thank you very much for your intervention uh, although the picture you've painted is rather bleak regarding press freedoms in Bulgaria. Should we we'll now give the floor to Mrs Cunningham? A lighter picture or maybe you will come quite the opposite with more examples on, on the situation. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Alde Preston, Mr. Verhofstadt and Mrs. Weber for the initiative of organizing this very important and, and timely hearing in the parliament. Uh, I'm the director of EMPA, that's the European Newspaper Publishers Association. And we have members in almost all the member states, including Bulgaria, and in addition, Switzerland, Serbia, and Norway. And in total, our members represent 5,200 newspaper titles across Europe at national, regional, uh, and local level. Uh, now, the written press uh, in Europe remains uh, a vital force, and uh, the press is publishing across all platforms, uh, in print form and also on a variety of, of digital uh, platforms. And the written press remains extremely important for addressing all of the challenges facing the EU today, including the very important issues that are debated uh, in this House. 
Of course, the basis for the newspaper industry across Europe uh, is freedom of the press. And it's essential to open and democratic debate uh, that Europe has an engaged and informed citizenship. And that's where uh, the press, the professional press, is, is really vital uh, because you cannot have self-government without a fully informed, educated uh, population. So if the press cannot function properly, uh, then that's a problem also for democracy uh, within Europe. Um, Europe, thankfully, is known as a world leader in terms of freedom of press and fundamental rights. And uh, our colleagues from uh, um, uh, Reporters Without Borders uh, have done very important research uh, into this area. Um, of course, freedom of expression is protected under Article 10 of the European Convention of Human Rights. Uh, this article explicitly says that individuals should have freedom to receive and impart information and ideas without interference by public authority and regardless of frontiers. And of course, Bulgaria is a signatory uh, to, to this uh, charter. There's also freedom of expression is protected under Article 11 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the EU, which came into force in the Lisbon Treaty. And the Charter states that the freedom and pluralism of the media shall be respected. Uh, so it's very, very clear. And of course, Bulgaria is a very key uh, member, member state within Europe. Yet, of course, not all countries, even within the European Union, perform equal, equally well when it comes to protecting freedom of the press and fundamental rights. And that's why we have to remain extremely vigilant and uh, our Bulgarian members uh, have brought to our attention a situation in Bulgaria as regards distribution of press titles. And this has raised a lot of concern uh, in EMPA among our members across Europe. And we believe that there's an urgent need uh, to examine the situation. And we particularly welcome this opportunity to go more in depth into the matter and to give visibility to the concerns and the, and the issues that have been raised to us. Um, of course, in the first place, the competition authorities must ensure that competition prevails in the distribution uh, press market uh, within Bulgaria. Uh, so the competition authorities have to do their work in this respect. We would also expect the Bulgarian government to move quickly and act decisively to clarify the situation and to answer the questions that we'll uh, be uh, discussing in the course of this seminar uh, this afternoon. Of course, it goes without saying, especially in this house, that freedom of the press is the lifeblood of democracy in Europe. It should not be forgotten also at the same time, and this is very important, that it's an area of solely national competence. Uh, so we do expect the Bulgarian government to ensure that the country adheres to the standards of press freedom and freedom of expression that we expect from an important uh, member state. And member states, of course, are best placed uh, to assess the market uh, situation at national, regional, and local level in their country, because the situation is so diverse uh, across Europe. So while the EU does not have competence to regulate in this area, the European Parliament in particular, in our view, has a very important role to play in um, exercising moral authority and in giving visibility to any problems and problematic, uh, problematic situations that arise uh, in a particular member state. Uh, so we, we believe uh, strongly that uh, a hearing such as this will give visibility and promote transparency around these important issues uh, within Bulgaria. So finally, we expect the Bulgarian uh, government to take notice of the concerns raised and uh, aired here today and to act decisively to ensure that press freedom in Bulgaria is not compromised. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have now 15 minutes for uh, questions and answers. Please keep in mind that there will be other sessions as well, so if you feel that your questions are related more with the other parts, feel free to intervene now or, or later on. But now I would say to take advantage of our uh, panelists now and please not more than two minutes each intervention. Yes, sir. 
Благодаря ви, госпожен председател. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Slavi Binev and I am an independent MEP representing Bulgaria. I wish to congratulate Audi for having organized this hearing. I think they're being called liberals. They're best suited to organize it. I have described uh, many problems in a letter to the President of the European Parliament with a copy to all the presidents of uh, parliamentary uh, political groups, uh, Mr. Verhofstadt included. I have described uh, all the problems uh, which are impossible to cover in two minutes. My letter presents facts which I have uh, explained in Bulgaria. It should either be uh, front page news uh, or uh, somebody should be brought to court. The very fact that we are having this discussion here today uh, indicates uh, what the situation is like. I have added a question to the EPP and I wish a simple answer. Is it possible to have a general, a former policeman from communist times, a flagman of democracy. People who have uh, worked in one way under a given system are tempted to use uh, their old experience in, uh, in working in a new way. I. Uh, I receive uh, very little media uh, coverage and very little, uh, very little media uh, attention. I'm being described in the media as uh, I'm being demonized uh, in the media. However, uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't wish to talk about myself. I wish to talk about principles of freedom and democracy. We have. Uh, uh, given up many of our former uh, comforts in the name of democracy and freedom. And today we expect European leaders to speak up because it would appear that they do not know whether they should uh, uh, denounce the former policeman or to be honest to the system or to be friends sh who should look the other way. I hope you will uh, allow me to speak again. I can see you are looking at your watch, but I have very important things to say. Television, TV stations in Bulgaria are interested in sanitation and uh, rubbish collection. Well, that's not the media's uh, business. The business of media should be too interested in the companies. Now, when the media are interested in sanitation and rubbish, and uh, when uh, the president uh, doesn't have a former uh, family, well, what can we say? When you make one and the same uh, mistake, you can't expect uh, a different result. I hope uh, you will uh, give me the floor once again. Two minutes. Please stay with the time. Iliana Baravska, Radio Kadven. Ilyana Barovska, K2 Radio. Mr. Verhofstadt has left the hearing. I want to comment on this and also I want to comment on the words of Mr. Basil. The most important thing that needs to be repaired in Bulgaria, dear Alde MEPs, because only the MEPs from Alde are here. I apologize. I have made a mistake. Apparently, well, it brought some life to the room in any case. In, but what we need to do in Bulgaria is uh, uh, related to what has been monitored for five years by the European institutions. The judiciary, corruption, and only then, Mr. Basil, can we speak of free media. And um, I want to turn to the MEPs here. Uh, don't you know that in Bulgaria there are European citizens um, 
who live there, but at the same time, the media there are owned by oligarchs, by criminals. And I don't apologize for my words here. And that is why these citizens I'm describing cannot properly enjoy their fundamental rights. That's the question here. Otherwise, uh, Monsieur, Mr. Brazil, Radio Cato, um, and I'm actually streaming this over uh, um, onto uh, the air through my radio, is a very good example of a radio that has been taken over by the former state security. Um, Yes, indeed, discipline. Yes, indeed, discipline in this house, which will be fully respected during this hearing. Once a person speaks, you can ask for the floor, you'll be given the floor. This is not a market where we sell apples or pears. This is a parliamentary house, and we will respect the discipline. Okay, I saw your hand. Now you continue. Please, but keep it with the time. Uh, yet another proof uh, that what I say is correct. Um, any free speech is being attacked. The report that is about to come out is very important to Bulgaria. The report on the progress made in the areas of uh, um, the judiciary and the interior. And it's very important that um, uh, everybody sees clearly through all attempts to cover up what's going on in the media. Otherwise, we'll keep on talking about um, bank loans and falsified public procurement. But if this report uh, puts an end to monitoring, uh, this uh, will be a crucial problem. For the floor. Yes, two minutes, please. Thank you. My name is Urlin Spasov. I'm the executive director of the Media Democracy Foundation in Sofia. A very quick question to Mr. Basil. Recently in Bulgaria, we've been hearing a lot of uh, skeptical voices as regards uh, the evaluations uh, provided by um, many uh, international organizations, such as uh, Reporters uh, Without Borders, etc. People somehow don't trust uh, their comments. Uh, how can you uh, respond to uh, this kind of criticism? Could you give us some information on the methodology, for example? How do you collect the data? Or, or question, please keep in mind that we need translation. So if you speak too fast, it's not helpful. I apologize for having intervened in the way I did. If I understand properly, uh, this is a question and answer session and not a comment session. In uh, one of uh, the sessions, well, in a session today, uh, I, I will uh, make a statement because I have something to say. I'm not here to listen to people uh, who are speaking uh, in contravention of the regulations. Now, uh, Mr. Basil, did I understand you correctly? Bulgaria has a huge problem. There is a bank which funds all media. Is this what you said, or is there uh, a misinterpretation, perhaps? We turn now to our panelists to give their reactions and their uh, answers to the questions or to the comments that were made. Um, well, I'm afraid it's difficult for me to answer because I didn't really hear the question properly. And I think this is quite symptomatic of the way in which press freedom is dealt with in Bulgaria. You understood me quite correctly. There's a huge problem with press freedom in Bulgaria. And we've been um, uh, talking about that since 2008. We had a report published in 2008 
We'll probably adopt the report in 2012. It's being prepared, although we have to uh, notify a certain number of bodies first and a certain number of uh, interlocutors. A certain number of questions are often asked to, to um, authorities in Bulgaria on certain issues, and we don't often get very satisfactory responses. During the legislative elections, a certain number of commitments were taken, which are still not being implemented. Impunity for um, those who attack journalists in Bulgaria is a fact. Every time the Commission goes to Bulgaria, there's some kind of attack on the media. And we need to know why that um, always seems to fall at the same time as the Commission visit. It's not that there are taboos in Bulgaria, it's that there are some subjects that will just simply never be tackled. You said that um, hygiene is not an issue for the press, but yes, of course it is. Um, it's one of the main issues they should be looking at. They shouldn't just be investigating supposed um, uh, corruption. The problem is that in Bulgaria, often you you have to look through um, a tabloid um, and somewhere between the picture of a naked woman and some other scandalous article, you'll find a serious piece. There are huge stakes when it comes to um, the coast, the environment, um, housing, lodging. These are all important issues and they're just not dealt with. Um, some of the speakers this afternoon will be uh, dealing with these issues. Um, some of the issues that are, st are still a problem that when they joined the European Union um, should have been dealt with five to ten years after they entered, not twenty. Bulgarians themselves are those who are responsible, firstly, followed by the European Union. And that, when I say the EU, that means the press as well. Organized crime is a huge problem, and we're still making the same areas, errors with the new Balkan countries that are arriving here. Um, I'm afraid I haven't answered your question directly, but I am uh, open to answer any others. Your comments are very helpful for this debate and also for the conclusions that will be drawn by the end of the debate and also thinking of the follow-up activities that, in, in fact, the European Parliament, the European Union in general, but I'm speaking about the European Parliament, uh, will have to, to do. Ms. Intanim, if you have to add something, please. Yes, just briefly. Um, I think as EMPA, we should leave it up to the experts on the ground in Bulgaria who are speaking on the next panels uh, to go into more detail. Uh, but I'm happy to say that uh, Bulgarian publishers have invited EMPA to undertake a fact-finding uh, mission to Bulgaria because it's very hard to go in-depth into the issue uh, from, from Brussels. We have to see the situation on the ground. So we are putting together a, a delegation of um, European publishers to visit uh, uh, Bulgaria in the near future and uh, to, for the publishers to see from themselves what the actual situation is and to try and clarify some of the urgent questions that have been raised. Please allow me to, to thank very much our distinguished guests and to ask them to take your, their seats in, in, the, in the room and to invite the members of the second panel to join me here. The, the second panel, come here. It's the panel on the financial independence, yes? I think that one of the most important topics when we are talking about media freedom, especially these days, and I can tell you that this was the subject that we discussed even this morning, although in relation to another part of, uh, of, the, of Europe, it was, not, it was no longer European Union, is indeed the financial aspect. Because media cannot survive, media is a business, that's for sure. But at the same time, media uh, needs money also to inform correctly the, the public. And to me personally, media freedom, the, the, the main 
aim of the media uh, freedom is to inform correctly the public. Of course, it is also about shaping the public opinion, but it is very important to have the, the possibility to correctly and promptly inform the public. And this requires very often money to do so. So let's talk and let's hear about the financial independence in, in Bulgaria. Our first speaker is Mr. Lubovir Pavlov. He is the chairman of the Union of Publishers in Bulgaria. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, what do on behalf uh, of uh, the Union of Publishers in Bulgaria, I wish to thank you for this invitation. The topic we are discussing today is an extremely important one, and uh, we've attached an importance to it for a long time. Uh, the Union uh, of Publishers in Bulgaria is an organization which uh, defends uh, the principles and interests uh, of the publishers of uh, print media in Bulgaria, that is, newspapers, magazines. The problems uh, which have been deteriorating recently uh, have uh, been uh, raised by us uh, for a long time. There have uh, been many discussions, uh, and I appeal to everybody to be aware that uh, the issue is an important one, it is emotional, and we are becoming emotional when talking about it, because uh, freedom is, uh, an, is a crucial uh, value. Uh, without which there can be no democracy. We, we, we would like to live in a society, uh, we do not wish to live in a society in which uh, this uh, value is not shared by everybody. Uh, the Union of uh, Publishers in Bulgaria uh, has its uh, doors uh, open uh, to all media uh, we have uh, several criteria. Uh, one is uh, to sign uh, the Code of Ethics. We insist uh, on uh, transparency of ownership, a very important condition uh, for us, uh, and uh, it is related to the topic we are discussing. So uh, the issues of financing and ownership uh, are issues uh, which affect uh, distribution and uh, access to information. I will explain the position of the Union of uh, Publishers. Uh, one, uh, uh, Mr. Theo Zahov, uh, uh, will uh, uh, explain uh, uh, some of the issues. Good afternoon. For those of you who do not uh, know me, I am the co-publisher of the Capital newspaper. The topic we have come together to discuss today is uh, an issue which has been uh, raised many many times uh, the problems uh, which started in 2007-2008 are becoming increasingly aggravated in the conditions of an economic crisis uh, all publishers uh, face economic uh, difficulties advertisers uh, are reducing their budget budgets purchasing power is uh, shrinking and uh, electronic media and internet are becoming increasingly important. Advertising uh, budgets on the internet uh, are not the same as advertising uh, budgets uh, in the printed press. So uh, in Bulgaria, as, as a consequence, uh, in Bulgaria we have the corporate bank, uh, and the uh, new Bulgarian media uh, group, uh, which uh, are distorting the market. The new Bulgarian media group is increasingly purchasing uh, media outlets. 
Now, these media outlets uh, are not an expression of free will, but they serve uh, the interests of uh, lobbyists. They, they serve vested interests. The end result is uh, that uh, the people, the powers that be, have a media comfort, and I'm not talking about uh, the powers that be now. So financial support is uh, ensured uh, by the new Bulgarian uh, media group. As a result of this, uh, the uh, media market is uh, distorted. There is distortion not only in the print media, but in the electronic media as well. So the competition authority is not intervening. What is more, it has fined Economedia. And uh, this uh, fine was upheld uh, by the Supreme uh, Administrative Court. Their reasoning, their justification was that uh, we have uh, defamed uh, the new Bulgaria media group. The government is uh, not, uh, has not intervened. Uh, there is uh, no end uh, to uh, malpractices. There have been no results. Things are becoming worse. Why? Because uh, last year, at the end of last year, uh, some members uh, of uh, the Union of Publishers left the union. They set up another uh, organization. However, they bought out those who left the organization. So what we are seeing is an, an expansion of uh, monopoly. This is a tendency which is becoming increasingly widespread. Uh, as a result of this, the free media has a voice which is less and less heard. Financially, it is becoming uh, very difficult for us to withstand. We try to do it uh, because we are aware that uh, society needs us. Uh, the union will continue to raise this issue. This is why we're here. We're here because the issue can obviously not be resolved in Bulgaria. We need to draw the attention of the outside world. We need uh, the support uh, of the European Union to finally put an end to all this. And uh, generally, yes, these are the broad outlines of uh, the situation. And back uh, to you. Here now from Mr. Sasho Dikov, who is a journalist and the program director well known in Bulgaria. The floor is yours. Microphone, please. I apologize. Uh, yes, indeed, I am well known in Bulgaria, but people outside Bulgaria don't really know me, so they don't really uh, know um, that I can be a bit eccentric sometimes. Uh, I've been a program director of uh, Channel 3 in Bulgaria for a couple of years now. Uh, this is the equivalence of uh, the, free of, uh, the Freedom of Europe radio. Uh, uh, for the end of um, uh, the communist era of Al Jazeera uh, in many um, contexts. I'm here because I'm a representative of a media that is not uh, backed by a huge company with uh, loads of money or uh, backed by uh, a bank, for example. And here I would like to talk to, uh, to uh, Turn to Mr. Basile and uh, let him know that um, he should get into greater detail about the bank that he's been mentioning. I don't think he knows all the details there. In any case, uh, Channel 3 is the media that enjoys uh, the reputation of being the freest in Bulgaria. Yet, uh, uh, there are uh, plenty of um, obstacles uh, in its way. But I'm not here to criticize Bulgaria. I'm here to criticize the European institutions. 
We've been condemned already. We've been described as traitors, as people betraying their motherland, uh, as people uh, belonging to a grouping backed by a certain bank. Um, everybody, uh, according to those claims, uh, has a somewhat dubious rep reputation in the media in Bulgaria. That is why I would like to thank uh, Mr. Ilchev, uh, uh, Mrs. Pervanova, and Mrs. Husmanova for organizing this hearing here. But uh, honestly, it seems to me that uh, um, all of this is just a formal event. Your boss uh, um, uh, left. He was here for only three minutes. Uh, where is he? Nobody knows. Maybe he thinks that uh, three minutes is um, just about enough to spend in the company of some bizarre uh, journalists from Bulgaria with dubious reputation. Honestly, it, um, it seems to me that this is just a, a formal event, uh, while what we really need, what we're really asking for, are very strict measures. And that is why um, I want to speak uh, precisely in this uh, panel, the panel on financial independence. As an independent media, what we rely on is only advertising and the subscription paid by our subscribers uh, because we're a cable television. Uh, both of these um, sources of funding are shrinking. So we are facing some difficult choices. We've got about 70 or 80 people working uh, for, for the channel, and it's very difficult to pay their salaries month in and month out. Um, we had a project supported by the European Parliament. Uh, it lasted for um, about 14 months, and then uh, that was some help. But uh, when we reapplied, uh, our application was uh, rejected. We also uh, um, uh, submitted an application um, under an employment-related program in Bulgaria under the Ministry of Employment. Uh, our application was rejected while um, others received about half a million for uh, for technical equi equipment, for example. We've got uh, some uh, projects with some ministries that uh, for very small sums, so they in no way um, threaten our independence. But honestly, uh, for more and more, uh, newspapers in Bulgaria, it is the state that is the main source of advertising money. And uh, that is why I'm here. I know very well what to expect when we get when I get back in Bulgaria. I know I should expect awful criticism. And it's very bad that uh, we don't have the representatives of the other media union here. They should have been here with us. Uh, and what I'd really like to see in Bulgaria is not a mission from Reporters Without Borders, but rather a mission from the European Union investigating all media groupings and companies and owners in Bulgaria rather than um, bringing all of us here, wasting two days and just uh, organizing uh, pro forma events while the major representatives of uh, the media tumor in Bulgaria are not in the room. Um, I have uh, another minute to go, you're uh, telling me. Um, I'm about to conclude. Here's a proposal. The European Parliament grants commissions uh, for advertising, uh, or rather informing um, the, uh, the public uh, on its work. And we are an independent media who um, has made its name as an investigative media. It is absurd uh, that um, millions um, 
of Europe would go to Bulgaria on different projects and only 10% of them are actually used. Um, the take-up rate is very, rate, very low and um, when it comes to measures related to the control of the independence of journalistic work, um, zero percent of the money is being taken up. Um, there are other foundations working in Bulgaria uh, um, funding some projects, but honestly, uh, if uh, there are no measures, um, there's no way out of this. A year on, uh, we can expect all kinds of um, conflicts between the two groupings. And people like me will simply leave the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. I feel obliged, actually, to have two comments before uh, proceeding with the, the next guest. Um, because already on, on, on two occasions, uh, the fact that Mr. Verhofstadt left was mentioned. If I'm not mistaken, he's attending right now a conference of presidents, which is the leading body of this parliament. Uh, in this parliament, many things happen at the same time, and it's not always possible to be here entirely. But this by no means implies that this event is a formal one. How formal it is, I think it is entirely depending on what you want to say, what the messages you want to convey to the people in the room today are. Uh, I also have to apologize for these time constraints, but I have on my list, in fact, 14, 14 speakers in such a short period of time. So because of this, yes, the time is not generous. It's between five and eight minutes, but let me tell you something. When we take the floor in the plenary debates, we are given one minute. We fight for every 30 seconds, in fact. When we are given two minutes, it's wah. And we learn that you can say many things in two minutes exactly the way you write the essential in an article with 500 words, not with 5,000 words. So it's a learning process also for us, but I can assure you that there is nothing formal in the sense that we want to think a box. Quite the opposite. This is an event because we consider to be very important the situation of the media freedom in Bulgaria, as we considered also in, in the case of other countries which uh, were on, on our uh, agenda and are still uh, there. Regarding the, the other union, I guess you mentioned the Bulgarian media union. They are on my list, but I'm afraid that there is no one uh, in the room, unfortunately. Therefore, I will turn now to Mr. Siromakhov, who is another very well-known TV journalist in uh, Bulgaria. The floor is yours, sir. I'll try to be brief. As Henry VIII told each one of his wives, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Unfortunately, the debate so far has been in the spirit of, well, let each man say what's on his mind. I don't think this is uh, very useful. I don't see much uh, point in each one of us uh, complaining uh, to the European Parliament. It's a little bit uh, like uh, kids uh, complaining uh, to their strict father and expect him to mete out justice. This is counterproductive and naive. Unless we try to solve our own problems in Bulgaria, we can't expect help uh, from above. We can't expect Deux ex machina, Deux being Brussels. An important question is, uh, why is uh, there no such, si no similar hearing taking place in the Bulgarian parliament? Well, this is an important question, but uh, it is for the Bulgarian MPs to answer. Why don't they organize such a hearing? Probably because they think that, the, that there are no problems with the media in Bulgaria. 
I'm not going to waste your time with the problems of the media in which I work. I would rather draw your attention to something which I would describe as scandalous. Uh, and this is the relationship between media and power, the media and the Prime Minister in particular. I have been uh, in the media for 12 years now, and uh, I have uh, never seen uh, such an attitude on the part of the media to the Prime Minister. It reminds me of uh, communism and of the way the media back then treated the dictator Todor Zhivkov. Uh, I think uh, that uh, all limits uh, have been uh, uh, exceeded. Let me quote a few examples. 19th, uh, 19th of May uh, 2010. God in uh, our uh, heart uh, and uh, Boyko or the Prime Minister in our minds. Another title, Boyko is uh, saving uh, rare flowers. Newspaper Capital. Boyko is uh, saving uh, parrots uh, threatened with extinction. So, Boyko the savior in all of them. In all these uh, uh, headlines, the prime minister is referred to on a fir uh, you know, uh, using his uh, first name. Just like a neighbor uh, on whose door you knock uh, to uh, ask uh, for uh, some sugar because you ran out of yours. Another, exa another uh, headline. Uh, Boyko is worried uh, about uh, the earthquake. Uh, and another headline, Boyko, uh, at, uh, Boyko with uh, Buddha. You think this is only the political pages? Let me give you a few examples from the sports pages. If they write about uh, football, it's not about the national team, it's about the local team whose member the Prime Minister is. So, uh, a media, I'll give you uh, as an example a media coverage uh, about uh, um, a match uh, um, with uh, Boris uh, Becker. Well, Boris uh, Becker uh, won. Ah, but there is another title uh, Boyko Borisov uh, beat. Uh, won four games. Uh, Boyko made uh, Boris Becker sweat. These headlines uh, don't uh, give you much idea about what actually happened. We can't really blame the reporters. The reporters do uh, what they're told by their bosses. And uh, the problem that we should really be discussing, the root cause of our problems, is that the media owners are people who have nothing to do with journalism. They come from other sectors. They come from the banks, from the lottery, from uh, Parliament, some of them are MPs, so the pharmaceutical industry, but they don't know much about uh, journalism as a profession. And I think that this is uh, the root cause of all the problems. Because they, uh, there's no way, they, they don't have the expertise uh, to understand uh, the reasons for their failures. Uh, and uh, by way of conclusion, uh, I, I use uh, uh, the presence of Mr. Uh, Pavlov. Mr. Pavlov, you talked about the Code of Ethics, which you wrote. Did I, understood, uh, did I understand properly? Yes, uh, you understood well. Well, how does the Code of uh, Ethics, uh, how is the Code of Ethics reconciled uh, with a headline uh, in a newspaper published by you? Uh, and the headline was, Sasha Dikov is uh, a homosexual. Now, Sasha Dikov is here, 
we're talking about ethics. So, could I ask you uh, to comment and to answer the question? Comment by the end of this of this question and answer session. I have a question myself, um, and the question is. Oh, thank you very much for your intervention. Um, my question is, is it often that um, state advertisement happens in the sense that without, uh, without uh, proper competition, various ministries, central administration, local administration, advertises in newspapers, in TV, that's for the panelists in, in this moment. And I do have a number of uh, people who are Thank you, Chair. I wanted to clarify a few things and ask a question. First, as far as the question of why is it the Liberals that are dealing with this with this issue, well, it is quite clearly because two of the main reports um, of the European Parliament on the issue uh, have as rapporteurs members of our political group. One of them is uh, on the freedom of the media in the world in general. Marita Shaki is the re rapporteur there. And then uh, Renata Weber will um, be able to explain a bit more on the other report because she's the rapporteur there. It's about uh, the rules. Um, in the media environment in Europe. And that is why the major goal of this hearing is not only to uh, discuss the uh, different aspects of media freedom in a particular member state, but also to bring out into the light some elements related to the way the media are funded. Because what we work on here at the Parliament is mainly legislation. So everything that's uh, said here, everything that was said at the other hearings on France, on Italy, on Hungary, all of that is taken into consideration when we work on the legislation in the field in a way so as to guarantee um, sufficient level of uh, transparency and democracy um, in all uh, of these countries. And uh, we uh, also gather data from Freedom House, Reporters Without Borders, Transparency International, and other organizations. And uh, on the proof based method, uh, we collect information, and our expectation is uh, to glean the best proposals on uh, uh, ways to guarantee independence of the media. And that is why I think uh, what Sasha Dikov proposed here is a very good idea. And uh, it should get into the report. He mentioned that uh, the funding that um, media can compete for should not only be related to promoting um, the activities of uh, the European institutions, but also to investigative for investigative work. It's quite clear that governments are not going to pay journalists to investigate their work. But I would also like to know what other proposals you have related to um, other aspects of uh, journalistic work in general, freedom of the media and uh, freedom in general. Uh, we are very much in need of these um, comments. Thank you. This session, I cannot take more. But before that, please allow me to answer to your uh, comment on why are we here to complain, yes? Well, the truth is that when you complain about the situation of media freedom in Bulgaria, I feel as a European citizen that this is something that it's important for me. It matters because what happens in Hungary, what happens in Romania, in my own country, you don't want to know now. Uh, trust me. <laughs> Too many similarities. Um, what happens in Bulgaria? What happened in, in Italy? These are things that concern all the European citizens, in fact. We no longer act in our own isolated territories. We are all members of this big family, and what happens there affects me directly or indirectly. Uh, yes, you have the floor, and then, yes, exactly the other. Thank you very much, Mr. President. One question to Mr. Pavlov. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. A question to Mr. Pavlov. Are his media objective? Do his media take sides? Secondly, why do you exercise censorship of my answers? Three, why don't you publish uh, open letters of uh, huge uh, public interest? Uh, letters uh, about uh, companies uh, involved in malpractices, letters uh, about uh, intimidation and threats against people who are ready to testify. Will you provide uh, coverage uh, to this uh, hearing and thereby prove, prove that you are interested in proving, uh, in uh, defending uh, media freedom? By the way, I uh, contacted the Bulgarian news agency and uh, reserved uh, a slot uh, to continue the discussion. A question to Ms. Weber. I would like you very much to read uh, the letter which I sent to the Liberals, and uh, I would appreciate an answer from you as uh, a colleague to colleague. To Sasha Dikov, uh, you said that uh, the state is absent you can see many graffiti around uh, the country uh, saying, I love uh, my country, I hate my state. Uh, the situation uh, today uh, is very similar to a well-known film, uh, The Dictator. Uh, now to Ivo Siromachov, uh, who asked, how come the Bulgarian uh, MPs uh, never thought of organizing a similar hearing? Uh, I sent uh, a letter about a year ago to the Bulgarian uh, parliament. It has been officially registered in parliament. It's uh, a letter uh, about uh, censorship. Uh, All the questions which were raised here is something which I try to do, but when you're acting on your own, it's uh, almost impossible. Uh, Giovanni Meloglia, Alliance Internationale des Journalistes. I'm from the International Alliance of Journalists, co-organizer of the first citizens initiative in the media. Now, I'm taking the floor because Basically, our proposal very much echoes what a lot of the panelists have said, the petition or the proposal that we're going to table to the European Commission. I'd also like to strike a more hopeful note to the panelists and the operators. The economic operators and all conflicts of interest with the economic players. Now, that's a clear remit of the EU. Now, you're not only coming here to complain to the European Parliament, but obviously the discussion affects the development of a European single market. So this is going to be an essential part of our proposal to the European Commission, and I hope it will be a solution for several European countries such as Bulgaria, Hungary, and Italy. And I hope that we will get support for our European campaign. Thank you. Yes, the gentleman back. Yes, I had a question to Mr. Paolo. Uh, speak in the mic. Yes, hello. I had a question to Mr. Paolo regarding the uh, union of publishing, publishers in Bulgaria. Uh, regarding how many members do you represent, represent papers, and what's your combined market share in the Bulgarian market? Uh, thank you very much. I will ask now the panelists to answer because, unfortunately, the agenda is not generous, as I said. Uh, <clears throat> Antonia Parvanova asked me about uh, my proposals. When a newspaper says uh, on the front page that I'm a fairy, uh, I would like to make uh, real money on the basis of the fact that I'm not a fairy. We should uh, try to put a break uh, to all the mud uh, slinging in the media.
And I would like to hear Mr. Pavlov's uh, answer to my question. There were several questions. I will uh, try to answer them in the way in in the order in which they were asked. First uh, of all, I'm very happy that uh, there is uh, a debate, uh, which means that there is uh, a freedom of expression. Uh, Sasha Dikov, uh, Dikov is a free and independent journalist who has uh, never been afraid of uh, speaking freely. Uh, I will disagree on one point with him. I wish to thank Mr. Verhofstadt on behalf of our union. Without him, this uh, hearing uh, wouldn't have been possible. I'm sure he's a busy man. And uh, I hope uh, that there will be another opportunity uh, for him to spend longer with us. I disagree with uh, uh, Sasho that uh, Brussels is simply going through the motions and is ticking boxes. I heard at the very beginning uh, that uh, the European Parliament is uh, strongly interested in Bulgaria, and I hope uh, that uh, Europe uh, will uh, help uh, will help us. I uh, I, I agree that uh, these uh, issues uh, are best uh, discussed uh, uh, locally. Uh, I. Uh, the union of uh, publishers uh, will uh, help uh, organize such a meeting, will host uh, such a uh, debate. Uh, we will invite uh, MEPs uh, from all political groups. We will invite uh, representatives of the national parliament uh, and the political groups. Now, uh, concerning your questions, uh, Ivo Sirumakhov uh, was said very clearly at the beginning uh, that everybody is saying uh, what's on their mind. Uh, yes, he was uh, right, uh, but I'm afraid that uh, this is uh, what he did himself. He spoke what was on his mind. Instead of talking about uh, financing, he started talking about uh, headlines and so on. Nothing wrong with speaking your mind uh, freely. I will uh, uh, answer your question about uh, the headline. Yes, we have an, a code of ethics. Uh, uh, some people may say nobody uh, complies with it. However, uh, under the code of ethics, uh, the publishers should not tell the editors uh, what to what headlines uh, to use. If a newspaper says something uh, which is not true. Incidentally, Bulgaria today is not a member of the Union of Publishers. The members of the Union of Publishers are only uh, media outlets. However, if they if a media outlet says something which is not true, it, they sh it should carry a penalty. I will take the initiative uh, for a change uh, in uh, the criminal code and increase the fines uh, for defamation and uh, for providing factually wrong uh, information. Every publisher should bear the responsibility for factually wrong information. The last uh, question. Uh, the editors-in-chief uh, should uh, have complete freedom. The uh, editors are the face of a democracy, and our union believes uh, it is unacceptable that these uh, editors uh, should uh, be connected with uh, the communist intelligence services. The communist intelligence uh, services are not different from the intelligence services in Nazi Germany. It would be like uh, uh, allowing Eichmann to become an editor-in-chief uh, of a German newspaper after the war. Now, uh, as uh, to whether 
our uh, our members uh, are being objective the editors in chief in chief uh, describe uh, the facts as they see them our requirement is that they should cover two sides uh, very often they criticize the government however I cannot tell an editor in chief that he should be that he should criticize the government and be in favor of the opposition uh, or vice versa. I'm sure that they make mistakes. However, uh, they cannot be always critical of the government. You know that uh, uh, there are media support the government because they're funded to finance by it. They can neither be only critical or only favorable. There have been uh, positive uh, tendencies. There have been positive achievements by the government in the field of uh, combating uh, organized crime. You know that uh, not uh, everything is black or white. There have been positive things. The union of uh, publishers met uh, the government. They gave us assurances uh, that uh, the VAT for printed uh, media and uh, for books uh, will be uh, eliminated. We raised this issue, and I was given the assurance that this will happen. So we hope that more positive developments will uh, will follow. Of course, there is corruption, but it doesn't mean uh, that everybody is corrupt. Not all civil servants are corrupt. Not all judges are corrupt. Not all uh, publishers are the same. We want to know who the publisher is, but the publisher should give freedom to the editor-in-chief. You can't always expect uh, a publisher to be a journalist. What is important is that the editor should be uh, a good journalist. As to the number, we have about uh, 20 uh, regional, national, and local governments. In practice, uh, there are no influential print media that uh, are not uh, members of uh, the Union of uh, Publishers. I have very little to add. Uh, there was uh, no question addressed to me. So if uh, there are other questions. Uh, we have to apologize, but we have one more hour for five more speakers, and I cannot actually make miracles, believe me. So please allow me to thank very much our panelists, to ask them to uh, regain their seats in the, in the room, and to invite the members, the speakers of the next panel to join me. Thank you very much. So, we, we, we ended the, the last topic talking about ethics, in fact and the Code of Ethics. And this part, this panel, this part of our uh, meeting, it is indeed about ethical standards on, on media. And we have with us three journalists from Bulgaria, so I will immediately proceed to give them the floor. I apologize, but definitely not for more than five minutes. Uh, Mrs. Lili Marinkova, you have the floor. Quite a lot of things have been said about the state of journalism in Bulgaria, so I'll be rather brief. As far as the ethical standards are concerned, the most important thing is having a good role model, giving personal example. And uh, those people who are able uh, to give such a personal example can be found in all uh, 
media groups in Bulgaria. So as a journalist, um, I feel rather hurt when there are all kinds of insults hurled against our colleagues indiscriminately. And another thing worries me quite a lot. Um, very often, um, there is an abuse of this situation, and uh, practically all debate is stifled under uh, insults and uh, qualifications. Um, so, uh, practically, um, uh, very often, this makes me think that um, this is a way for certain groupings in Bulgaria to to clear up the way ahead for themselves. Um, there is a prize in the name of Radustina Konstantinova, a tribute prize. Uh, so her memory is being kept alive. Um, that is something that needs to be said here. And another thing that needs to be said is that there is no censorship in Bulgaria. And we are all trying to be as open and honest as possible. I've, in, I've um, uh, already uh, had the chance of inviting Mr. Binev, for example, um, in um, um, our radio show uh, twice. Um, so we do represent all points of view. We have to keep in mind, however, uh, how um, politics works in Bulgaria. The opposition is not very active uh, in its role of opposition. And maybe there's some fear, um, I don't know. But it's quite clear that the debate going on uh, or the parliamentary questions being asked are not as open and, and dynamic as they should be having in mind the, the overall situation in Bulgaria. Well. Of course, politicians are also um, often very good and not uh, um, saying everything uh, frankly. We also need to keep in mind that certain media managed to make a lot of money within a very short uh, period, while at the same time there are these other media who have made very little, if uh, at all uh, profit. I'm very glad that in state media everybody can be hurt, but unfortunately uh, this is not a fact as far as private media are concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your intervention, and I think that we should go now directly to uh, Mr. Asen Jordanov for the, the presentation. And uh, I know that you have a PowerPoint. I it's hope that. OK, please. Good afternoon. I first wish to thank the organizers of this hearing. This is a very important uh, initiative in the European Parliament. It's important not only for media freedom in Bulgaria, it's important uh, for public life in Bulgaria. Bulgaria is now a member of the European Union. It's part of the European family. Therefore, Bulgaria's problems uh, are the EU problems. in the media freedom and uh, ethical principles uh, panel, we will hardly be able to cover all the issues through lack of time. Uh, the chair uh, has already said that we're under strong uh, time pressure. So I'll try to be uh, as brief as possible. Mm. 
so as uh, not uh, to lag further behind. One thing in turn by way of introduction, we all know the importance of uh, the media. We all know how crucial this uh, public institution is in uh, the global processes uh, globally uh, because uh, the media not only shape uh, the public opinion, uh, they create uh, the system of values. Uh, the media are at the heart uh, of uh, the system of uh, values. It is the media which uh, determine how people think. This is why it's important uh, that uh, they uh, be free. Freedom, of course, is an abstract notion from uh, uh, times immemorial, uh, humanity has been uh, striving uh, for freedom uh, and has been grappling with the notion of freedom and has been trying to, uh, to answer the question, what is uh, freedom? So to extend this to the media, what, what is the criteria for media freedom? Uh, there can only be a single criterion, and this is truth. To be free means uh, to serve uh, the truth, uh, whether it's uh, a convenient or inconvenient truth. Uh, usually, truth is uh, inconvenient uh, because it's uh, multi-aspectual and it is uh, not always accepted by everybody. However, this is uh, the difficult mission of journalism. Uh, the journalist uh, uh, is called upon uh, to voice uh, the truth, whatever that truth uh, may be. Uh, cherishing uh, illusions uh, is, uh, is different from freedom. I illusions uh, uh, are, manipula are manipulation. We've been talking uh, this afternoon about uh, media freedom in Bulgaria. For several years now, I've been working uh, only uh, uh, in uh, internet uh, media. Uh, Mr. Olivier Basile uh, said as much, uh, the only uh, freedom, we, we only have uh, freedom uh, in the field of uh, internet media. So uh, with my presentation, I would try to answer the question, why is it that there's no media freedom in Bulgaria? Where does uh, the fear to speak the truth uh, come from? Oh. Uh, We'll, I'll be talking about censorship and auto-censorship in Bulgaria. It's a story about uh, CIMO or the CIA. The German uh, newspaper Tageszeitung on the 3rd of May 2012 published uh, a unique story. It uh, revealed uh, something uh, New. This is the secret name of the CIA. This was leaked in. Uh, it was leaked uh, by WikiLeaks. Uh, this was the leak of uh, diplomatic uh, documents uh, published uh, by U.S. embassies around the world. Bulgaria figured uh, prominently in these uh, cables, and Tages uh, Zeitung, in fact, showed uh, that uh, CIMO is the central intelligence agency or its most secret department. Information provided by CIMO, or CIA, claims that the Bulgarian Prime Minister is involved uh, in traffic of drugs, synthetic drugs, and shady uh, fuel transactions in collaboration with the Russian 
company Look Oil. This is an excerpt from the report as it was written by the American ambassador John Byerly. This report shows clearly what Simo wrote about the Bulgarian prime minister. The information was published uh, by Deutsche Welle on the next day, the 31st of May, 2012. It was covered by a small number of Bulgaria outlets. One of them uh, is uh, an internet. Uh, in fact, it, it, only, it was only covered by internet uh, sites. A year ago, now, this information was uh, published a year before it was published by Tages Zeitung in the official representative of WikiLeaks for several Balkan countries. When now the Bulgarian Prime Minister then described it uh, as uh, gutter press uh, information. A week later, According to the Bulgarian internet uh, rating, uh, this uh, was one of the most read and most commented stories on the internet. And uh, yet, this was uh, uh, a story which did not appear anywhere in the other media. In the classical Bulgaria media, a story about a country, about the entire social and economic life of a country, in f a story which would cause uh, a storm in uh, most other countries, uh, has been published by only 1% of the Bulgarian media. So you can see the results of a Google search. The story in Tages Zeitung was not published anywhere. And this is information based on official CIA sources. Channel 3 published it. So if we have uh, omitted anybody, thank you to Sasha Dikuf. So if I have omitted uh, a media, uh, please correct me. I will add your name uh, to the list. Well, this was discussed uh, in uh, our in one of our programs. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Marinkova. Uh, uh, our radio, Car 22, uh, asked a question to Ambassador Warlick. Now, these are the several newspapers which published correctly the information uh, published in the Tagist Zeitung. The question is, uh, what does SIMO mean? It means special, in special intelligence methods operations or sp uh, special or surveillance methods. 99% of the Bulgarian classic media Mm, said nothing about this problem. And finally, being free means being able to say that 2 and 2 plus 2 makes equals 4. This is not something that I invented. Uh, I'm quoting George Orwell. That's 
That's a statement. Uh, let me give now the floor to Mrs. Lydia Pavlova, also a very well-known journalist in Bulgaria. Здравейте, колеги. Много се радвам, че сме тук заедно. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm very glad we're all here today. I realize that we're all very tired. I'm particularly tired. I'm even a bit shocked to be here today because uh, um, I got a phone call yesterday night um, from Mr. Ilchev. Um, who invited me um, here, and uh, I made every effort to come. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had the time to uh, uh, get as prepared as my colleagues to, to speak in general terms about the freedom of the media in Bulgaria, but I'll speak about my feelings. And I'll tell you very briefly what I think about the media. Uh, I've worked in central um, or rather national media f uh, for quite a long time, but uh, I'm currently working for a regional newspaper. And honestly, the major principle of journalist, uh, journalistic work is to focus on the topical issues, on the serious problems. And um, that kind of issues in uh, the area of Houston deal where I work um, often involve uh, two people known um, as the Galevi brothers and uh, you know very well that it was thanks to um, the pressure from the European Union that uh, um, the legal proceedings against them finally started in Bulgaria. But honestly, I've been informing uh, on the, uh, informing people uh, since 1993 about the criminal activity. Um, I have um, a video of about a minute uh, or two. Uh, can I uh, play it, please, uh, uh, if you don't mind? Um, and uh, honestly, uh, this um, video uh, presents um, just one of their deeds, uh, not really the, the most shocking one, but uh, it involves somebody who had to give up having children uh, because uh, of them. Um, I've always uh, given everything to be um, um, a very good journalist, but uh, honestly, I've also been subjected to a lot of threats. Very recently, my car uh, was set on fire. Um, a couple of days after I described uh, uh, the, the way um, these two brothers um, uh, ran away from uh, the country. Um, it was... Uh, my recently bought second-hand car, uh, and it's completely destroyed. Um, and moreover, my son has been beaten up uh, two times, and uh, I can tell you it's not easy, but... Uh, uh, after all, I see what happens to other g journalists in Bulgaria. I, uh, we heard uh, uh, a quotation f uh, from the media um, uh, headline say, stating that Sasha Dikov, one of the most respected journalists in Bulgaria, is a fairy. Oh, well. Um, uh, there are all kinds of um, slanders against me as well, uh, 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 that my son um, uh, is allegedly a drug addict, that uh, the, the Galevi brothers bought my car for me, and that I supposedly said uh, that uh, I uh, uh, insisted uh, on them getting a conditional sentence. Uh, so uh, honestly, uh, all of this uh, happening when I work in a newspaper that has a very, very small readership. Um, I, I was completely shocked. And all of this was in relation to 
um, uh, a court case that uh, went on following all the procedural rules. Um, yes, I understand. So let me play the video. But um, before that, let me say that on, on this case, um, the people who gathered the information were uh, only a few people, uh, specialized prosecutors, and it was thanks to them, them that uh, the um, evidence was collected. Because about 80% of the police in uh, Dubnica uh, practically works for the Galvi brothers. Uh, and, and a small example here, uh, when my car was set on fire, I called the, the police, and the police came. And he said, oh, it wasn't the Galvi brothers who set your car on fire. And uh, I said, uh, it's quite clear that it wasn't them personally. But I think they're quite possibly related to the case. Um, as far as Dupnica is concerned, uh, the uh, town of Dupnica, mm, uh, uh, the current mayor is the first mayor who um, openly positions himself against uh, the uh, Galvi brothers. Oh, um, and you know very well that uh, they practically started behaving as mayors in uh, Dupnica. They started hosting um, conferences um, with ministers, with MPs, uh, and the institutions only reacted when things went way out of the ordinary. So is there any way we can play this little video? Uh, in any case, you know very well that uh, at the first instance, Scott, the brothers were acquitted, and the judge responsible for their acquittal is still the chairman of the Kirsten Deal Regional Court. So I can assure you that in many positions, uh, they have um, their people. Somebody here behind me m m could probably uh, play the video. Could you uh, put it down, please? Um, uh, just a second, uh, they said. OK. So, indeed, somebody has to protect the dignity of independent journalists and independent media in Bulgaria. I don't know whose job it is to do it, but um, we are going through dismal times. But I think, uh, generally speaking, Bulgaria is uh, um, able um, to, to free itself from the tentacles of the communist octopus. You know very well that Minister uh, Roman Petkov um, uh, lost um, his ministerial position uh, because of these, uh, uh, because of the m m mafia, and now he's trying to. Um, get out of the hands of, of uh, the communists, as he said. But um, what I like the most here is that we keep on fighting. And we should be proud. <laughs> Finally, the video. Um, I apologize uh, for having to play these uh, horrible videos. Uh, this is somebody who was beaten up. Um, by uh, the, the criminals I'm describing um, on the 10th of Febru February 2010 um, because he was supposed to pay uh, in some, some uh, he was, they were racketeering him and he was supposed to pay them 500 uh, levs um, uh, but he uh, gave them uh, five, 50 levs short uh, because uh, he mm, had to bury his father and he needed the money for that, for the, bur the burial. He was beaten up in such a horrible way that um, he can no longer have children. So a journalist's job is not only um, 
it is not to try and um, win the approval of those in um, power, uh, but rather to help um, the victims. So at the first instance court uh, uh, decision, they were acquitted, then they uh, uh, were um, uh, convicted uh, um, at the second instance, then the Court of Cassation, uh, for some unclear reasons, um, uh, reduced their sentence. Then they ran away. Then my car was burnt, and um, um, I'll have to walk now. It's good. Uh, it's some exercise. We should always look at the bright side of life. So your question. Uh, I don't know who will have to protect journalists. Of course, we all know who has to protect journalists. This is why we have a government. And when it's about human rights, it's not only about the government not to interfere with the free exercise of our human rights, but it is also about the obligation of the state to create a legal frame and the practice, the institutions that would protect us and enjoying our uh, rights and, and freedoms. So in your case, of course, it is about the obligation of the state, which means the government, to investigate and to see who is the responsible for setting your car on, on fire and then to sanction uh, those who did this. I have, yes, three requests for floors. Please keep it really very short. Thank you, Mrs. Weber. Uh, any piece uh, from uh, all uh, uh, political groups? At the beginning of our discussion, uh, I asked, where is Mr. Verhofstadt? From the presentation and comments uh, by the colleagues, uh, it became obvious that uh, we are afraid that the legislators of uh, Europe might abandon us. Mrs. Parvanova, you asked uh, what specific changes should be done, should be uh, introduced with your assistance. If the monitoring report of Bulgaria is positive, the Supreme Judicial Council will elect the new prosecutor, will elect new uh, chief uh, judges of courts, will continue to promote uh, corruption uh, in legal guise. Mrs. Weber, you asked what should be done some of the Bulgarian media have no access to public procurement. We're talking about European funding, but Bulgarian media have no access to uh, public procurement. This results in lack of competition, which leads uh, to monopoly by owners funded uh, by corporate uh, bank. This results in control over people metrics. We have one people metric agencies. There is one monopolist, uh, one, one monopolist who holds uh, advertising rights. This is why at the beginning I asked, where is Mr. Verhofstadt? Where are the European representatives of Bulgaria? Try and make sure that the monitoring of Bulgaria continues because the reform of the judicial system, which never even started, never, uh, it never resulted in removing uh, uh, corruption uh, at uh, the high places. The former secret services still hold sway over the media. We can go on talking about media freedom, but unless we uh, remove the root causes, we will continue to see frightening images like the one we saw a few minutes ago. Thank you. Atanas Chobanov, uh, uh, colleague uh, from Asen Yordanov. First of all, let me make it clear that the slides uh, we showed 
uh, was uh, the Google search a few days, uh, one day uh, later. Probably, it is likely that a few days later, the Google search uh, might have yielded uh, different uh, results. Uh, at any rate, uh, our Google search uh, does not show an interest on the part of uh, the big and mainstream media. Now, my question to the representatives of the European institutions is as follows. None of the monitoring reports does not focus on uh, investigations uh, of uh, Mm, terrorist acts against journalists. Now, these are bombings, uh, uh, disfigurement with uh, acid, shootings. Nobody, uh, now these are not uh, high profile cases. The clip, the, the, the video showed uh, uh, almost led uh, to the man's uh, being, to the man being crippled. The investigation shouldn't be that difficult, uh, however, uh, there is uh, protection of uh, the perpetrators. The European Parliament voted uh, a report uh, on the judicial system, but why are, don't they include the attacks against journalists? Why don't they include them in the list of high-profile cases? In this way, Bulgarian, the Bulgarian authorities might feel pressure to actually do something. This is my question. That, in fact, she succeeded to, to make a, a, a few minutes uh, available on her time. Commissioner Nelly Cruz is here. She's the Vice President of the European Commission and Commissioner on a Digital uh, Agenda. So I, I hope that she's here. I was told she was here just to share with us uh, a few of, of the ideas that, in fact, are in the, in the Commission in relation to media freedom. But before uh, actually giving the possibility to give her the floor, I need to tell you that uh, keep in mind, please, that when it's about media um, and media freedom, it's the principle of subsidiarity which works within the European Union. So, it, in fact, it is in the hands of the member states to do this. This is why the report that I'm trying to draft now, it is, it's not going to become legislation, but it is a political message from the European Parliament on what kind of standards do we need in every single country of the European Union in order to, uh, to have uh, freedom of, uh, of media? Replica. Uh, now, the subsidiarity might turn out to be counterproductive. An example, if we introduce in Bulgaria legislation under which the media need to register the ownership, offshore companies included, and declare who are the beneficiaries, the European Commission will uh, penalize us uh, uh, because uh, we are violating uh, a principle of uh, concealing uh, ownership. N this is, uh, in fact, a way of showing and making visible real ownership because uh, the large banks and media owners uh, are hiding their money in offshore companies so that you don't know who the real owner is. Can you see the paradox? And this and many other things, but the European Union so far in, in relation with the, 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 the media has acted only on to keep the correct competition on the market. That's in, in, uh, in its powers. And when it's about legislating at the European uh, Union level, it is also like legislating at home. A media law may say in the first paragraph, media is free, and then all the others may speak about restriction to media freedom. So, Commissioner Nelikra, so happy to see you here. Please. I just introduced you and explained that you have a very Sh brief time to, to spend with us, but I guess that uh, the audience would be 
very pleased to listen to you. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm really uh, pleased to be in your midst, and I highly appreciate the unexpected um, uh, invitation uh, to come over uh, when I was asking for that. Uh, I changed my agenda, and I left um, a couple of your colleagues where we yeah, had a uh, meeting on e-commerce, completely different from this issue. But I think this is absolutely very important, and I want to briefly, personally address you, uh, for this issue is, for me, absolutely a priority. Um, by the way, congratulations for taking this initiative. The Alder Group uh, did um, do that before, and I think also this time it is absolutely uh, um, worthwhile. Um, it is about protection of fundamental values. And um, the fundamental values for me are, by the way, also media freedom. And talking about media freedom, I am now today uh, attaching uh, Bulgaria. And across all the other member states of the EU, it is fortunately not for every member state a given issue that there is medium freedom, as we are aware of that. So we have to be alert. We must fight for it every day, so to say, and you know me in the meantime uh, for speaking up and taking action in recent high-profile cases like the threat of media freedom in Hungary. By the way, the Hungarian government is still failing in its efforts to comply with European norms. Uh, the recent report of the Council of Europe shows that very clearly. So. If you think I'm too biased, uh, I got the backing of uh, the Council of Europe. But I've always said, um, and I want to repeat that, that I follow developments in other member states just as closely, and that is why I'm here today. When national developments might infringe EU laws or common values, I will never shy away from speaking up. I think this is the basic of our democracy, so to say. That are a couple of principles that we should take in serious. And I'm quite ready to exert all the political pressure that is needed. The case of Bulgaria appears worrying, Madame Chair. When well-known NGOs like Reporters Without Borders rank Bulgaria as number 80 in its most recent World Press Freedom Index, and then I'm talking about 2011, 2012, at the very bottom of all European member states. This must just alarm us. And I, for example, read about death threats against journalists in Bulgaria, but also, for instance, in Greece. <coughs> and let me be clear, the threat of violence is never ever an acceptable part of <coughs> democratic debate. Given the current competences in the EU, it is foremost member state authorities that must ensure that journalists are safe, like all the other citizens. Of course, before, and I'm aware of that, before rushing to judgments, and drawing conclusions, we must listen to all sides and make absolutely sure we have the full picture of what is happening. And that is why I welcome the debate today. Um, my team and I are listening closely to take your input into account, and we will continue to monitor the situation in Bulgaria very, very carefully. And if you think monitoring is not enough, Last year, I set up the high-level group on media freedom, and uh, the chair of that high-level group is taken by the former Latvian president, Madame Faira Fieke Freiberge, and the group has assured me that concrete recommendations by the end of the year are to be expected, and then it will be on how to protect and how to promote pluralism and media freedom across Europe. Hopefully, next time we meet, we can discuss those recommendations, 
and find better ways to implement and protect our common values. And it is talking about just implementing and protecting our common values in practice in every member state. And I think we need each other to fight for those principles. And I will be on your side in the fight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice President of the Commission. And, and let me just inform the, the, uh, the audience that, in fact, Mr. Lucas Houston, who is a member of your cabinet, has been with us from the very beginning, and he stays until the end of this, uh, of this hearing, precisely because the topic is so important and that he wants to, to brief you entirely about what, was, uh, what has been discussed uh, today here. I'm afraid I'm, I'm not going to, into that direction. It's late. We still have other, other guest speakers with us. I want to thank very much uh, Commissioner Cross for being here to, with us. To thank very much the panelists uh, of this session and to invite the next panelists to join me here and to, uh, to go ahead with our event. Thank you. The last topic of the today event, the last panel, is about uh, media and politics. And we have with us Professor Orlin Spasov and uh, Mr. Yavor Dachov. I will immediately give you the floor for no longer than five minutes. Uh, please keep in mind that in, in, we do have the interpreters with us only until six o'clock. So the floor is yours. Uh, Thank you, Madam Web Weber, uh, distinguished uh, members of the European Parliament. First of all, thank you for this invitation to be here as a representative uh, of the Foundation Media Democracy. It is a Bulgarian NGO. Uh, I'm sure that uh, this is a very useful uh, discussion. It will, I'm sure it will help promote uh, media freedom in Bulgaria. I'll try to be brief. I'll start by saying that one of the most important uh, factors, uh, one of the most important aspects of uh, the media landscape in Bulgaria is that criticisms against the media landscape uh, are coming not only from a variety of sources within Bulgaria and outside it. Criticisms have started coming from different sources, politically different, diplomatically different. They started coming from uh, NGOs, and uh, from uh, other uh, areas in uh, media expertise. Now, this diversity of sources of criticisms is uh, a guarantee that the diagnosis of the media landscape is, is a correct one. And uh, as uh, for us uh, who live in this uh, media uh, landscape, the situation is uh, somewhat ambivalent because on the one hand, uh, the Bulgarian media market is uh, characterized uh, by, I would say, excessive variety of media outlets. On the other hand, uh, we have a relatively good legislation, at least on paper. Now, these two factors uh, create a sense of uh, comfort, or probably it's a false uh, sense of comfort. Perhaps the first problem is uh, that uh, the uh, pluralism uh, you can see on the news stands uh, or when you switch on the TV and you have access to a hundred uh, channels is uh, only an, uh, an apparent one because it is based only on quantity and not on the variety of viewpoints which this media express. It is not based on the variety of political viewpoints. 
as to the freedom of uh, media itself. Now, this is freedom guaranteed by legislation. Unfortunately, uh, it is it, very often it is on paper only. And when we talk about uh, the relationship between media and politics in Bulgaria, one of the most important question is what makes the situation in Bulgaria special? What makes the things uh, happening in our country different from uh, other countries? I think we can identify two aspects which set us apart, especially when it comes to pressure uh, of uh, against uh, the pressure over media. Unlike Hungary, the pressure over the media does not uh, come f from media regulation. Secondly, the pressure does not come by means of exercising control over public media. Why is this? The explanation is simple. The area of regulation and the area of public media are two zones, two areas which are a subject of uh, very close scrutiny. Uh, so each attempt at uh, interference is very quickly registered. So the factors which limit media freedom uh, stay away from these two sensitive areas. So they've been more or less left alone. Uh, however, uh, they are subjected uh, to incessant uh, reforms and uh, to the extent uh, to which uh, they begin to lose uh, their identity. So, um, in s instead of uh, these two familiar instruments, the freedom of media in Bulgaria is restricted by coalitions between private media, uh, the government, the powers that be, and vested uh, business interests. Well, this is the main uh, field uh, we need to analyze. However, this is uh, a difficult uh, area to analyze and investigate for a very simple reason the visibility of relations uh, is uh, not very clear. Uh, it is not as evident as it would be if uh, public regulation is the instrument uh, that is used. So what, what, are, what is the form of uh, these uh, coalitions between media and uh, vested interests uh, and authorities? Many of uh, the many people before me indicated uh, some of those uh, aspects: taboo topics, uh, intervention in editorial policy, intimidation, direct and indirect uh, threats, uh, lack of clarity about uh, financing of uh, media, and this includes uh, the allocation of uh, advertising the permanent tendency of oligopolization of the media market. But there is also an oligo oligopolization of the distribution of uh, printed media. Uh, the list uh, is uh, a long one. And uh, by way, uh, finally, uh, what uh, is uh, what are the implications uh, of all the tendencies and developments I outlined? It's a huge topic. I will just highlight some very some of the most uh, evident points. 
the first dangerous uh, tendency is the blurring of uh, the tendency, uh, the blurring of uh, the uh, boundaries between journalism and public relations. A recent uh, study of relations uh, between PR and journalists uh, in Bulgaria, it is a study conducted by the University of Vienna, uh, the study shows uh, that 45% of public relations uh, specialists say that they are journalists as well. Uh, and this is a very dangerous uh, merger of the two professions. Yes, yes uh, uh, just a few more words. Because of this, uh, at uh, the uh, parliamentary and local elections in Bulgaria uh, last year, a considerable part of political content uh, was uh, paid for. So uh, access uh, to the media was reserved to those who had the money. Another part of the political content uh, was a hidden, uh, took the form of hidden public relations. So this merger of the two practices is one of the main sources of corruption in the Bulgaria media because uh, we uh, keep learning uh, that this is uh, the field in which corruption practices uh, are promoted. Very often they take uh, the form uh, uh, of uh, providing media comfort uh, in exchange for something else. And the something else is uh, the comfort which uh, the business, uh, which the government provides uh, to the business. Uh, it's a huge uh, topic, uh, but uh, Mrs. Uh, Weber has uh, indicated uh, that I've run out of time. Uh, just half a minute more, Madam Chair. At the beginning of uh, this uh, hearing, uh, we identified something very important. Criticism against the media landscape in Bulgaria is uh, becoming uh, uh, uninteresting, uh, desemanticized. Maybe we should find a way of uh, saying things in a way that make it uh, visible and uh, identifiable. The criticisms uh, voiced against the media rarely get, uh, rarely receive uh, uh, an access to the main in the mainstream media. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I will immediately turn to Mr. Dahov, and please only for five minutes. Okay, I, I have three minutes video and two for me. Thank you very much. Um, this is just uh, in order to wrap up. Um, uh, uh, let's end on a lighter note. Um, the Bulgarian Prime Minister uh, talking to um, uh, the Director of Customs in Bulgaria. This is uh, the story I want to cover here because it's a very good example. And here I want to say that it is not only the, the freedom of expression that is problematic in Bulgaria, but it's also the lack of reaction. People don't re react. N uh, neither the citizens nor the institutions react when if they receive a story like this. I will play a telephone dialogue between um, Bulgarian Prime Minister Boyko Borisov and Vanya Tanev, the head of the customs in Bulgaria. And Boyko Borisov um, orders Vanya Tanev to um, stop um, a currently going campaign uh, against uh, illegal imports of alcohol into Bulgaria, a campaign going on in the customs uh, at that point. Um, and uh, from illegally imported alcohol, Bulgaria uses, uh, loses about 2 billion uh, US dollars of revenues per year. And then um, I'll also play um, um, the 
comments of Mr. Uh, Diankov, the financial minister, and the president. Um, you will see uh, the video and you'll see the subtitles so that you can understand the mystery of Bulgarian voices. But uh, I would like the, the technicians to turn on the sound as well because uh, it's really something to be appreciated. Imate go rozpečatan and um, uh, for those who don't understand Bulgarian, in your folders you will find the transcript of um, the conversation. But please turn on the sound. Can we ask the technicians to turn on the sound? Uh, at least you can you can see the text. I'm trying, but he's not. <laughs> okay. Technology is not always on our side. <laughs> he, will, he will comment briefly in that program. Yeah. But you may continue with your comments. Okay, uh, I think it's clear. So basically you can see how it all goes. And in your blue folders you, you'll, you'll find the transcript of the conversation. But what's going on in this conversation is that the Prime Minister orders uh, the Director of Bulgarian Customs to uh, put an end to an operation against um, a businessman um, known as uh, Mishu the Beer. Uh, then there's another uh, telephone conversation uh, between between uh, Valutanov and um, Mr. Strangev, um, one of his subordinates, where uh, Mr. Tanov um, relays the order he has received. What happened to uh, um, the publication? We published this telephone conversation in the gallery, uh, newspaper, in Galeria newspaper, but nothing happened. N um, the Bulgaria, the prosecutor's office in Bulgaria didn't do anything to, to, to start proceedings, then uh, Mishu the beer died. You can, you can hear the sound now. So basically, at the end of the conversation, um, um, the Prime Minister instructs Mr. Tanov to call uh, the minister responsible for customs, Minister Diankov, and inform him of um, uh, the order to, to uh, terminate the operation. Uh, no reaction, however. Uh, in Bulgarian media. Then I mentioned that Mishu the Beer, as he was known, uh, died uh, a little later on. And then later on, there was a bomb, a bombing um, um, in, uh, in front of, um, of the office of our newspaper. And then um, Sasha Dikov didn't mention it, but his car was also bombed recently. Um, yet, uh, um, only a month uh, after uh, the attack, uh, the prosecutor shelved the case without having found the perpetrator and uh, while having quite clear suspicions of who it might have been. So this is what's going on in Bulgaria. There was no investigation whatsoever. And um, unfortunately, I have to say that the Bulgarian prime minister very often abuses uh, the very support he receives uh, from Europe. And that is why I would like to ask the following question. Is there any mechanism to 
applies some pressure. Uh, there's, there's no pressure onto the government in Bulgaria, neither from within, because Bulgarian institutions um, obey sheepishly, um, and uh, the judiciary in Bulgaria uh, doesn't really react. Uh, so that is why I wanted to, to, to play this recording, because it's it's a rather telling example. And then there's all kinds of evidence that the um, Prime Minister um, is uh, helping um, all kinds of smuggling efforts and that uh, he has uh, relations um, with certain suspect organizations. Nothing, nothing happens when evidence like this comes to light. Practically, in Bulgaria, we can speak of, a, of an artificial empire. Uh, the, the government put in all the assets of the state into um, and deposited them in, into a private bank, and then um, um, the prime minister is very well informed. Uh, of, of the problems uh, we um, have informed him myself uh, Christina Petkova and, and um, that, that there is a problem um, uh, with the media grouping and I don't want to speak against the owners of, of the media grouping but they they're simply using the wonderful opportunity that the state is uh, giving them and um, Another issue is uh, related to the way newspapers are distributed in Bulgaria. The influence of this grouping on newspaper distribution in Bulgaria um, is over 80%. So this means that at any given point in time, they can just put an end to the freedom of press in Bulgaria. And the very fact that there's no reaction to this kind of criminal behavior practically um, is a, a serious cause for concern. I'd like to know, uh, um, I'm, I'm a bit uh, reluctant to talk about why um, the, the West didn't make sure that, the, that there was independent media in Bulgaria uh, from the very start of the transition period. Uh, this is already becoming a philosophical question, but things are going on the way they're going on in Russia. Everything is uh, slowly getting into the hands of the oligarchs. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your presentations. We are already behind the schedule, so I can only take a couple of questions, not more than one minute each. Uh, yes, Mr. Bassi, please. Oui, plutôt, uh, plutôt des recommandations. Well, just some recommendations to the Parliament and the Commission. I'd like to start very briefly by saying that I'm quite disappointed with what we've heard. We've been fighting now for two years for the Parliament to take an interest in press freedom in Bulgaria. You had the Aldi um, head of group, the Commissioner, a lot of people have been done at institutional level, which is quite rare to see at the Parliament. And yet, at the end of the day, I would like to have heard much more about the practical day-to-day -day difficulties that we've been dealing with for the last three years. I haven't heard that today. I would have liked to have heard editors say why they can't propose, um, uh, publish uh, their media composition and um, where they come from. I didn't hear any kind of information on that. And if we can't hear it in days like today in these kind of events, then what's the point of them? Now, the institutions are complicated. It's difficult to um, really make people understand them. The Commission can't really do much about press freedom. It's not their role to do anything about that in member states. However, there are a lot of areas where the Commission can act, particularly when it comes to environmental, economic, uh, healthcare standards. There's a whole series of areas which Bulgaria itself can't um, deal with freely, but there are areas where the Commission could act in all of these. It doesn't all have to be based on the um, principle of press freedom. It's quite. I've been coming to the Parliament since 98 and it's quite 
unusual to have hearings organised on this topic. And I think we're actually missing this opportunity. It's really a shame. We'll come back to you. I won't do it now because we don't have enough time, but I'll come back to you with a written proposal um, suggesting what can be done at technical levels so that the Parliament and Commission can really do something. Uh, hello, Andrew Conning. Uh, there's been reports that almost all of the Bulgarian media weren't invited to this event. Could you just let me know if that's true and if they were invited, what date they were invited on? And if you have any evidence that they were actually invited, I would very much like to see it because otherwise a hearing on media freedom where only a fraction of the country's media is invited is beyond farcical. Thank you. Well, obviously this question is not for the panelists, but in the closing uh, remarks, I think that Mr. Ilchev will, will answer. Please allow me to thank very much our distinguished panelists and, uh, in fact, to all the contributors and to give now the floor to Mr. Stanimir Ilchev, my colleague, members of the, the ALDE group, member of the European Parliament, who is among the organizers of, of this event. Stanimir, please. Thank you, Renat. First of all, I wish to thank those who accepted the invitation. Some of them knew that they would be criticized, and criticized is a rather mild word. And they took, they accepted their cross. Others did not know, but uh, having uh, drunk uh, the bitter cup of criticism, they came and uh, participated and said what they wanted to say. So my thanks go to both. Unfortunately, there are no representatives of the media union. Yes, they were invited. And uh, there is evidence to prove it. Uh, in the room, uh, we have uh, the assistance uh, who for several days uh, uh, and, uh, uh, were in active uh, electronic uh, correspondence. Uh, the colleague who works uh, in uh, a, a colleague in a regional paper was invited, uh, but uh, having uh, talked to her superiors, uh, she refused. The emotional reaction of the colleagues from the union is probably justified. However, I am sure that it has something to do with uh, uh, their controversy with uh, other Bulgarian uh, journalists and other Bulgarian organizations. They could have sent uh, somebody uh, to, uh, to make their case uh, it's bad for the hearing, uh, but I'm sure that uh, it's not uh, the end of the world. What is uh, more unpleasant uh, uh, is uh, the letters uh, which uh, they sent to uh, the parliamentary uh, group, letters uh, full of uh, uh, mud against me and my uh, family. It is true that uh, some of those who were invited were invited because international organizations suggested so. Others were invited uh, because we wanted to put together a group which was diverse, uh, which was experienced uh, and uh, had uh, and has the resources. Uh, to uh, outline the media landscape in Bulgaria. The first conclusion which can be drawn uh, from this uh, hearing is that the media landscape has deteriorated. Unless measures are taken, this could become irreversible. Second, these measures should uh, uh, not be limited uh, to a series of uh, visits. It uh, should uh, result in a fact finding uh, high level mission in Bulgaria. 
which is what we do when there is a problematic situation in candidate countries, Albania, Kosovo. Obviously, the media landscape in Bulgaria is comparable to the situation in countries like Albania, Kosovo, and Macedonia. Uh, I myself uh, will uh, insist on a series of visits with visits uh, which would conduct uh, interviews. Uh, but why not uh, undercover people uh, in uh, the media? We need uh, to know as much as possible about uh, the media in Bulgaria. We don't know enough. We're all surprised that 22 years after the transition started, the party political system is, on, is in crisis. The media system is uh, in a surprisingly bad shape, fragmented uh, uh, in, with uh, bits uh, fighting each other. Now, this is a waste uh, of uh, public resource, ultimately. If uh, other public resources uh, were wasted, uh, because of uh, bad uh, privatization, because of international crisis around in Bulgaria. This time, a part of uh, the public uh, resource, that is the medias, are being wasted within the country in broad uh, view of everybody. Thirdly, some uh, media outlets uh, are enormously servile. And uh, this is, these are early symptoms uh, of uh, authoritarianism. I think that uh, it is only authoritarianism that demands uh, servility. Uh, we know why business is servile and subservient. We know why some politicians are being subservient. We've been talking about the servility of media. We have not denied it. Uh, imagine a media asking the prime minister whether it should broadcast uh, uh, investigation. Well, I tried to, to find uh, a similar example uh, in uh, candidate countries, nor in, uh, for that matter, in countries like uh, Mongolia and Senegal. Secondly, we've been talking about uh, media blackout, uh, segregation of journalists, uh, journalists divided into good and bad, convenient and inconvenient. Efforts are being made uh, to drive out uh, the inconvenient journalists the most perfidious way to get rid of inconvenient uh, journalists uh, is in the hands of the employers. The absence uh, of uh, employment contracts. Well, there are many other uh, ways, uh, reducing uh, uh, the budget, uh, Modifying the text to the point uh, beyond to which it becomes uh, irrecognizable, intimidating uh, uh, young uh, journalists so that uh, uh, they are shown very clearly that unless they're careful, they might experience what uh, the victims in their stories have experienced. So, given the a uh, wastage of uh, media resource. Given uh, the binding uh, elements uh, within journalism, the uh, absence uh, of uh, reaction uh, results uh, in strong media comfort for a government. Finally, we should not pin too many hopes on hearings such as this one. The chairs of uh, political groups do not spend uh, uh, a not spend uh, a nine uh, to five uh, uh, slot in uh, parliament. Uh, 
They have many things to do, not only in this building. I don't think uh, we should be impressed uh, by who stayed for how long and what they said. What we should uh, focus on is could there be uh, a, a, re a response, such as a plenary debate, a letter from the European Commission, what can be done to put an end uh, to this horrible monopolization of the media market. Uh, I think that this is the way to go. Don't be afraid of those who say that you shouldn't uh, demonize your country. Uh, it if Bulgaria is uh, a part of a family, it uh, cannot have uh, uh, secrets uh, from such secrets from the family. This is something which has been experienced by Romanians, Dutch, uh, and other nations. Bulgaria will have to experience the scrutiny of the institutions uh, and parliament. And this will go on for as long as uh, we uh, begin to realize uh, that we cannot be parochial in our attempts, that we cannot believe uh, that uh, what we do at home will go unnoticed. I want to thank everybody who was present here, those who contributed, those who were in the audience, and I, I think that we all should remember once in a while that there was a nice time when we used to call media the watchdog of the society. Those are very nice times and probably we should uh, we should have them in, in mind all, all the time and we should give back to the media this role of uh, being the watchdog of, for the society. I want uh, to especially thank the interpreters for being also so kind and staying with us until this time. Thank you.